I, I don't understand the rationale here. I'm in the reddest state in the country. What can I say that might make people vote for Doug Jones? Oh, yeah, Joe Biden loves him. And you know who else loves him? Democrats. Democrats love this guy. So you should really vote for him, right? Right, guys? Anybody? Crickets? What kind of acid was Josh Moon on when he wrote this? Hey there, fellow tacticians. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that little notification bell because the more likes and subscriptions I get, the more people see my conservative content, which will make America a better place and angers the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. Now you messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. Today's Daily Dose of Stupid is yet another article from right here in the state of Alabama. This one it comes from Josh Moon. Now, I don't like Kyle Whitmire. I think I made that pretty clear in the, the previous segment. But Kyle Whitmire does occasionally come up with a really good article. And I've praised him multiple times on the show before. Sometimes he does really good work. I really can't think of anything I can compliment Josh Moon on. So if we were to compare the two, Kyle Whitmire is, I don't know, I guess kind of like the Wolf Blitzer, who most of the time is an insufferable leftist, but occasionally comes up with something really good. Or, or maybe Bill Maher. Bill Maher is actually better for that. Because, uh, you know, Bill Maher will occasionally be the voice of reason in the room, even though most of the time I wind up disagreeing with about 88%. I don't know why I pulled that number out of nowhere. But I, I wind up disagreeing with him way more than I wind up agreeing with him. But occasionally he is the voice of reason, and occasionally he does really good investigative work. I really can't think of an occasion or a statement or anything to compliment Josh Moon on. I mean, he's just absolutely horrible on it. He's the Brian Stelter of this analogy, or the uh, the Don Lemon. So let's go ahead and, and you can check this out. Uh, let's see if we can go ahead and pull this up. Again, I apologize. My technology has just been not cooperating with me. Uh, really for a couple weeks now, and that's the reason we've had such an issue getting shows going. Come on, let's get... There we go. So this is his headline from Alabama Political Reporter. Opinion, electing Tuberville could cost Alabama billions. <laughs> the piece itself is just hot garbage. And I'll show you what I mean right here. Money matters in Alabama, writes Josh Moon. Oh, I know we're not supposed to say it out loud that we're supposed to promote an image of Southern grace and hospitality, of churchiness and care, of rich people never getting into heaven. But the truth is, greed is our biggest character flaw in this state. Every problem we have can be traced back to our unending thirst for dollars. I don't know how you would make that case. I mean, literally every place in the entire world has problems. And some of them surely could be traced back to greed, but I... Don't think you could say every single one of them would be. Anyway, our ancestors didn't keep slaves because they hated black people. They did it because they loved money and the difference in skin color gave them ex an excuse, a really, really stupid excuse, to mistreat other humans and take advantage of free labor. Um, you know, there might be some truth to that. I think it certainly was more of an economic motivation than it was racial. Racial just kind of coincided with it. In fact, there's a lot of evidence that suggests that the vast majority of the animosity towards black people really more cropped up around the time of the civil rights union or the, the civil rights movement even more so than slavery. And I won't get into all that because that's beyond the scope of what we're talking about, but Josh Moon actually does make a decent point here, even though he's doing it in the most condescending way imaginable. And then he continues on, our rivers and lakes and dirt aren't filled with poisons from factories because we're too dumb to understand how this works. They're that way because our politicians are paid off to turn a blind eye to the dumping of toxic waste. Our schools aren't terrible because we have dumb kids or bad teachers. It's because we're too cheap to pay for them. You see what I mean? It's our lust for money and the almighty dollar. Every time. We love money. Okay, so a couple of things. First of all, there might be some politicians that are paid to take a blind eye, but in the general, that's simply not the case. Alabama is one of the most beautiful states in the country, and I'm not just saying that because our slogan happens to be Alabama the Beautiful. Generally speaking, we have pretty clean air and water. Because the thrust of this is, well, it's a bunch of evil, heartless, greedy Republicans that just care about money and are getting paid off, 
and they don't want to bother with the environment, and that's why our, our, we have such bad pollution. Well, first of all, we don't have pollution that's all that bad or all that out of the norm. And if you were to compare our pollution to a place like New York or like Los Angeles or like, you know, an, other countries, Tokyo, Hong Kong, you know, pick, pick uh, whichever one of those you would like, it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that there's a bunch of Republicans there because there's not. And then he goes on to say, you know, something about the schools or whatever. But here's the thing. We spend significantly more money per student than most countries. And yet you look at places like Finland that is spending less money than us per student and getting significantly better results. Our issue is not money in the schools, and it never has been. The issue, at least for the past several years, my entire lifetime, has been a lack of discipline and the ability to discipline kids in schools, something that Josh Moon emphatically rejects, even when talking to someone who's a 27-year veteran of the public school system, in the case of my own dad, who had this conversation with him on the radio a few years ago. To him, it's always, we got to throw more money at it, even though there are other places spending way less money than us that are doing better. That doesn't make any sense. If money were the issue, that would not be the case. He tries to make this case that because Alabamians do genuinely want fewer taxes and less government regulation, that that somehow makes us greedy. No, wanting to keep more of your own money does not necessarily make you greedy. But that's especially true. Like, it would be one thing if you were making the case that you're a super rich person and you won't buy a sandwich for a homeless guy. Okay, maybe you could make the case that that person wanting to keep his money is greedy but not wanting the government to come pilfer it from you, take it from you by force at gunpoint, that's not greedy. That's just wanting to not be mugged. That's, your th that's what that boils down to. Just because I don't want to fund every boneheaded liberal policy that Josh Moon would be in favor of does not mean that I am greedy. I do give to the poor. I do give to charity. And guess what? Turns out that conservatives, on average, give way more to charity in both money and time than liberals do. There have been several studies of this done over the past several decades, and they always come up the same way, that people that have conservative values, primarily because they're more religious, tend to do more for other people than people that are liberals because in their mind, ah, the government will take care of it. When a conservative person comes across a person that is in need, he says, hmm, I need to help that person. When a liberal person comes across somebody that is in need, they say, what an injustice. Look at all these rich people around me. Somebody should be helping this guy. See, it's never about them. They want someone else, the system, the government, a politician, they want someone else to take care of them. They just don't want to do it. Even if all of this were true, even if every word that Josh Moon has uttered in this piece so far were 100% accurate, you know what? It's still a really, really bad tactic to go into a a plea to for people to do something for you by saying, you guys are all a bunch of evil, greedy morons. That's a really dumb opening line when you're trying to talk somebody into doing something. But anyway, he continues on in the same article. Which makes me seriously wonder why so many people in this state are going to vote for a man who will cost us all, and especially our biggest businesses, so much of it. Talking about money here. Tommy Tuberville will be like a money vacuum for Alabama. Billions of dollars will vanish for this welfare state that relies so much on federal contracts, federal programs, and federal dollars. If you doubt this, don't simply take my word for it. Just Google up the press release from Senator Richard Shelby's office from the last, say, six years, the most recent span in which Republicans have controlled the Senate. Almost every single release is about Shelby securing millions or billions of dollars in federal funding for this, project, for this project or that project, getting the state share of dollars from a variety of different programs and initiatives implemented by Congress. So one thing that I have to get out of the way, that first statement, which makes me seriously wonder why so many people in the state are going to vote for a man which will cost all of us, especially big business, so much of it, talking about money again, Maybe it's because their motives aren't nearly as evil as you attribute. 
See, he's assuming that everybody in Alabama, he starts out with this premise and lays out his very weak and frankly unsubstantiated case for this, that the only thing people in Alabama actually care about is money. So why are you all going to vote for people, uh, somebody that will cost you money? Maybe because money is really not the thing that they value. That may be your perception and you may genuinely desire to want to believe that everybody in Alabama, because they tend to vote Republican, are a bunch of evil, greedy, hateful people. But then you see this and you're like, well, then why aren't they voting for the person that will give them more money? Maybe because that's really not our motivation. Maybe because you have attributed the wrong motive to people in Alabama. And then he goes into the second part of this, which is he makes the case that Richard Shelby, and by the way, Josh Moon is 100% correct in this, is the king of pork barrel spending. And he is. If there is ever a guy that you need to somehow siphon money off of the federal government and get it to where you want it to go, Richard Shelby is your guy. Which, by the way, to a conservative, is by far the worst thing about Richard Shelby. And so he tries to do this weird thing, and this is why this is in the Daily Dose of Stupid, because it's one of the dumbest things that I've ever seen. Josh Moon tries desperately to get conservatives to vote for Doug Jones because that will line their pockets, according to him. And then he reminds us of, hey, the reason you guys like Richard Shelby so much is because he brings in a lot of federal dollars. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah, we actually hate that. That's the reason that conservatives have been primarying Richard Shelby as often as humanly possible. There's a reason that I did not vote for Richard Shelby in the primary, and this is the reason. Because the guy is the king of pork barrel spending, and I don't want him to be. And so you're literally arguing against me voting for Doug Jones. Only Josh Moon could pen an article so profoundly stupid in every conceivable way that he actually winds up making me somebody that has a very winnable vote, not for Doug Jones, but at least against Tommy Tuberville, and did not pull for Tuberville. He was like my fourth or fifth option. I, he was way down on my list of people I wanted to be the senator. Only he could write an article starting out with the premise to somebody that is a conservative like me that doesn't really like Tuberville, or I don't dislike him, but he's certainly not high on my list, and I don't think he's a real conservative. Somebody that has something of a winnable vote and actually push me further into the Tommy Tuberville camp because he makes the point that Tommy Tuberville won't even be able to do this because he's not been there for 100 years. Oh, that's a good point. I actually really like that about Tommy Tuberville. You've actually ingratiated me even more to the Tommy Tuberville side. Good job, Josh Moon. It's because he completely doesn't understand his audience. He would assume that because I'm a conservative that I don't really have values. That's just a shell. That is a ruse that I put out to people because what I really like is money. Which, uh, if you know anything about me, not really a big concern of mine. If I really cared about money, I wouldn't have gone into media. If anybody should understand this, it would be Josh Moon. Conservatives do like money, just like everybody else, but it's not our primary value. You don't become a conservative because you love money and think that you should be rich. In fact, rich people tend to be less conservative. Most of your conservatives tend to be in the lower income brackets, especially recently. And so he gets the whole thing completely wrong. And another thing, too, that Josh Moon is what he's really doing here is he's doing epic levels of projection. Because the only thing that Josh Moon does like about Richard Shelby, because he's a big fan of big government, is that Richard Shelby votes for a lot of taxation, a lot of spending, and he brings a lot of that money back to Alabama. That's like the one thing about Richard Shelby that Josh Moon actually does like. And so because of that, he thinks that he can ingratiate people to vote for Doug Jones because Doug Jones also does that, and these conservatives, they must really like Richard Shelby, and that's the only thing I like about Richard Shelby. And so that's what I'll play off of. It's incredibly stupid. Conservatives hate that about Richard Shelby and always have. None of us like that about Shelby. That's why the conservatives voted for other people in the primary. And so he really just has absolutely no idea what the crap that he's, he's doing here. He continues on in the same article. But what's worse for Tuberville and for Alabama is that other Republicans don't like him either. 
Establishment Republicans essentially openly campaigned against Tuberville in the primary, tossing tens of millions of dollars behind his opponent, Jeff Sessions. They even favored third-place finisher Bradley Byrne over Tuberville. Yeah, that's the reason Tuberville won, you moron! Look, I didn't really like Tuberville. And to me, again, the whole establishment thing, that doesn't really matter to me one way or the other. But the most popular thing about Tuberville, like the one thing that he had going for them that appealed to Alabama voters, is that he was an outsider. Bradley Byrne is already in politics. Jeff Sessions is already in politics. Arnold Mooney is already in politics, and nobody knows who he is. I'm sorry, Arnold. It's the truth. But <laughs> no offense to Arnold Mooney. I actually like him, but, it, you know, he had no chance of winning that election because nobody knows who he is. But my point in all of that is Tommy Tuberville is the candidate now because he was an outsider and somehow Josh Moon is trying to cast this as a bad thing and saying, yeah, all you people that voted for Tommy Tuberville, you should not vote for him. You know why? Because establishment Republicans don't like him. Yeah, we don't like establishment Republicans. You know, I may not be the biggest Tuberville fan, but that is something that is a draw. The fact that he does come from the outside, the fact that he is not somebody that, you know, is an inside player when it comes to politics, which will also mean that he'll be able to get less spending for Alabama, which again is another thing I like about Tuberville. Everything that Josh Moon tries to point to to say, this is why you shouldn't vote for Tuberville makes me want to vote for him more. And so it is really hilarious that he has such a fundamental misunderstanding of the people of Alabama, despite having been here for a very long time. And this is probably the best part of the whole thing. Seriously, this is an article, remember, that Josh Moon is writing trying to convince people in Alabama to vote for Doug Jones, and this is his big pl- This is his big play. This is his finisher. This is at the end of the article. He's like, this is where I'm going to close the deal and make sure these people walk away knowing they've got to vote for Doug Jones and not Tommy Tuberville. In the meantime, Jones is highly respected by senators on both sides of the aisle. He already has a presence in top committees, and is well liked within the Democrat Party that he's and is so liked by the Democrat Party that he's on the short list as Joe Biden's AG should he not be reelected. I don't know what to tell you, Josh Moon. I really don't. You're so dumb that you think the way that you can get people in Alabama, the reddest state in the country, and the one where Donald Trump enjoys his highest approval rating out of all 50 states. Your big play to get them to vote for Jones is, you know what, guys? Joe Biden loves Doug Jones. What kind of moron are you? I mean, that's like going into downtown Jerusalem and trying to get, I don't know, the mayor of Jerusalem elected and go, guys, guys, you know when you got to vote for this guy? Hitler loves him. Like, Hitler really likes this guy, and I think you should vote for him. You're in Jerusalem, you moron. I don't understand the rationale here. I'm in the reddest state in the country. What can I say that might make people vote for Doug Jones? Oh, yeah, Joe Biden loves him. And you know who else loves him? Democrats. Democrats love this guy, so you should really vote for him, right? Right, guys, anybody? Crickets? What kind of acid was Josh Moon on when he wrote this? Only Moon could be this dumb. Only Moon could go into this article trying to convince people to vote for Doug Jones and every single point that he makes only makes me want to vote for Tuberville more. Or he knows that none of that stuff is going to work, that none of it is going to convince anybody to vote for Doug Jones and all he's doing is writing a self-serving article that appeals to him and his base. Those are really the only two options. But considering it's Josh Moon, I really just think he's that dumb. Hey, if you liked this video, then you should press the like button. I mean, that's literally what it's there for. If you liked the video but didn't hit the like button, then it's like getting great service but not tipping your waiter. Except liking is free, and so is subscribing and hitting the notification bell. So if you're enjoying my content but not liking my video, there's really only one explanation. It's because I'm black, isn't it?